the concept of punishment, its explanation, and its concrete request and reasoning during the past ages have presented a clear idea of how hard work changes and socializes wrongdoers in support of revenge and confinement. Punishment in its formation is now recognized to be an integral revengeful practice, whatsoever may be the additional role of revenge as reasoning or objective of punishment. The first form of punishment was the religion-based punishment or the punishment for sin. The ancient Indian culture describes a method of trial which was conducted using fire or agni as a medium. In other words, individuals had to undergo a trial by fire as an ordeal to prove their innocence which was called Agni Pariksha, similar to the one goddess Sita had to undergo in the epic of Ramayana. In the ancient time, prisons were only a place of detention where an offender was detained till his trial and judgment and the execution of the judgment. The structure of society was based on the principles pronounced by Manu and explained by Yagnavalkaya, Kautilya and others. Imprisonment was the easiest kind of bodily punishments, along with branding, hanging, mutilation and death. The main aim of imprisonment was to keep away the wrongdoer and not corrupt the members of the society. These prisons were totally dark, cold and damp without a light source and no way to keep the offenders warm. In ancient times, fine, imprisonment, banishment, mutilation and death sentences were the modes of punishment. Fine was the most common punishment and if the person was incapable of fulfilling, they were condemned to bondage until it was paid by his labor. During the Mauryan Empire, punishment was very severe even for small offenses like evasion of government taxes, giving false evidence, causing injury to artisans, ordinary theft, etc. In all these cases, the body was mutilated. 18 kinds of torture are mentioned, including 7 whippings. The penal code was quite relevant. The criminal code was very harsh and enforced strictly. The idea was set as a precedent for others and prevent them from wrongdoings. In other words, the objective of the punishment was deterrence and retribution. Four types of punishments were given in the day, which are capital punishment, corporeal punishment, social punishment and financial punishment. When we talk about capital punishment, it actually means the legally authorized killing of someone as a punishment of a crime, a death penalty for a crime. In simple words, it means a government-sanctioned practice where a person is put to death by the state as a punishment for a crime. In ancient times, capital punishment was executed for every small crime. It is the most extreme form of punishment. The procedures of execution of the death penalty have varied from time to time. Next up we have corporeal punishment. It means a punishment that is intended to cause physical pain on a person. It is also known as physical punishment. It is a punishment for the violation of law which involves the infliction of pain on the body. The objective behind corporeal punishment is not only to punish the offender but also to prevent the repetition of the offense by such offender or any other person. Another form of punishment is the social punishment. It is a punishment in which a person is restrained to make any kind of contract from the other persons or to move him at other places where he has no contact with the other persons who can help him in any manner, otherwise he is also liable for the punishment for it. Moving further, we have financial punishment. It is also known as imposing for fine. It was a common way of punishment which was not significant in nature and it was assigned specially for the breach of traffic rules, revenue laws and minor crime. It also includes the payment of compensation to the victims of the crime and also the payment of costs of prosecution. During the Gupta Empire, the penalty was very mild. Punishments such as capital punishment and traumatic amputation have seldom been awarded. During the Gupta reign, the criminal laws were not as extreme as in the modern period. During the Islamic period, the Islamic criminal law was formulated in accordance with the Sharia law. Strictly speaking, Islamic law does not have a distinct corpus of criminal law. It divides crimes into three different categories depending on the offense. Hadad, which are crimes against God, whose punishment is fixed in the Quran and the Hadiths. Kisas, which are crimes against an individual or family whose punishment is equal to retaliation in the Quran and the Hadiths, and Tazir, which are considered crimes whose punishment is not specified in the Quran and the Hadiths, and is left to the discretion of the ruler or Qadi, that is the judge. 
Some add the fourth category of siyasa, which are crimes against government, while others consider it as a part of either hadad or dazir crimes. Imprisonment was not considered as a punishment in the case of ordinary criminals. It was mostly used as a means of detention only. There were fortresses which were situated in different parts of the country in which criminals whose trial and judgment was pending were detained. There were three noble prisons or castles in Mughal India. One was at Gwalior, second was at Ranthambhor and the last was at Rothas. Although some of the societies are still using the ancient forms of the punishments, the punishments have also evolved along with the civilization and become less brutal or harsh. Now, the severity of the punishment depends on the crime. If the person commits a serious crime, he shall be liable to be punishable with the severe forms of punishment. In industrialized societies, the forms of punishment are either fines or terms of imprisonment or both. The objective behind such punishment is to correct unlawful behavior rather than directly punish wrongdoers. According to Section 53 of the Indian Penal Code, the principal forms of punishments to which offenders are liable are as follows. Capital punishment, life imprisonment, imprisonment, forfeiture of property, and fine. In modern times, capital punishment is the most severe punishment of all, which is given for severe offences. It is the most debated topic among modern penologists. It is given for the case of a severe offence. It is awarded only in the rarest of rare cases under the Indian Penal Code. There are some offences under the Indian Penal Code in which capital punishment may be given by the court. Under Section 121, states that waging or making an attempt to wage war against the government of India. Under Section 132, abetment of mutiny if mutiny is performed. Under Section 194, giving or fabricating false evidence upon which an innocent person suffers death. Under Section 302, punishment for murder. Under Section 303, murder by life convict. Under Section 305, abetment of suicide of a minor or an insane or an intoxicated person. Under Section 307, attempt to murder by a person who is under sentence of life, imprisonment if hurt is caused. Under Section 364A, kidnapping for ransom, etc. Under Section 396, the coity with murder. After the Criminal Law Amendment Act 2013, the following are the offences under the Indian Penal Code in which the death penalty may be awarded by the court. Under Section 376A, punishment for rape resulting in death or permanent vegetative state. Under Section 376E, punishment for repeat wrongdoer of rape. Life imprisonment means a person shall remain in jail for the rest of his entire life. It is one of the best alternatives to death sentence for those offences in which either punishment can be offered. There is a fixed term of life imprisonment but in case of the fraction of terms, it should be 20 years under Section 57 of the Indian Penal Code. In dictionary meaning, an imprisonment is an act of putting someone in prison or in jail as a legal punishment. The imprisonment is having three types and they are as follows. Rigorous imprisonment. Generally, it means hard labor. In this type of imprisonment, the offender is compelled to do hard labor or hard work in the jail, such as grinding corn, digging the earth, drawing water, etc. Simple imprisonment. In this type of imprisonment, the offender is confined to jail simply, and he is not compelled to do any kind of work, but they can be asked to, do, to work at their own choice with wages. Solitary confinement. It means keeping a person isolated from any kind of contact with the outside world. It differs from a view that feeling of loneliness may produce an influence on the mind of the offender and thus change his mindset. Section 73 and 74 of the Indian Penal Code provide for solitary confinement. In dictionaries, the forfeiture means something that is lost or surrendered as a penalty and the word forfeiture of property means the loss of property or money because of a breach of legal obligation. There are three sections in the Indian Penal Code that describe the forfeiture of the property and they are under Section 126, property used or intended to be used in committing depredations on the territories of friendly countries. Under Section 125 and 127, property received with the knowledge that the same has been taken by waging war or committing a robbery. Under Section 169, Property purchased by a public servant who is legally banned to make purchases for such property. Generally, fine means imposing of monetary liability on an accused in consequences of the offences committed by him. 
there are some offenses which provide a fine with imprisonment the amount of fine depends upon the command of the court